Hello. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, if you're new here, hi, my name is George Spence and I am a registered associate nutritionist with the Association for Nutrition. Um, and on a Tuesday, I come to my subscribers or viewers of my videos with taboo topics or topics which I feel need and deserve a little bit more, um, a little bit more people to speak more about them, people to feel more confident speaking about them to healthcare professionals, family, friends, peers, work colleagues, need a little bit more attention um, to shed the light to help promote um, health access. So this week I'm going to be talking about cervical cancer or cervical cancer screening tests or smear tests, both the same thing, just two separate th ways of saying it. I think they call it the scrape or something similar in America, which I think I prefer a smear but with a cervical screening test the sound of it sounds slightly better um so it was actually cervical cancer awareness week last week um so from the 23rd of January um just to really highlight and to promote smear tests and at the absolute importance of getting them done regularly and to respond to your letters requesting for you to book one in and um, because cervical cancer is actually the most preventable cancer so a smear test or a cervical screening test doesn't actually it's not actually looking for cancer it's not a cancer detection test it's actually looking for hpv so HPV can actually change the cells in your body to, you know, to cancerous cells. So catching it at the HPV level can actually stop cancer in its track. You can get the treatment and whatever forth before it gets to the cancer stage. So really, really emphasising, I think something like 98% of, can of cervical cancer cases could have been prevented. So every year in the UK, 3,200 individuals are um, diagnosed with cervical cancer, sadly. So that's roughly nine a day. And again, if you think 98% of them could have been prevented um, by getting a smear test, that is significant. Um, and sadly, two people die um, every day of cervical cancer. Um, so cervical cancer can affect anybody who has a cervix. So whether that be a woman or a trans man who has still got a cervix in place. Um, and it's most common in the early 30s. However, it can happen earlier, it can happen later. That age range isn't exclusive. Um, and like I say, it's not a cancer detection it's actually to help prevent cancer um, forming. Um, so if you are over the age of 25 in the UK, so between the ages of 25 and 64, you are offered a cervical screening test every three to five years, depending upon your local trust's policy. Um, you will, you can still be offered them prior to this if you have symptoms. So for example, I'm not gonna, you know, dive too much into it because this isn't about myself, this is about the general population. So I am 23 at present, but I have had a cervical screening test because um, as an overview, I was having incredibly painful periods um, and they wanted to investigate as to whether that could be um, cervical cancer. And um, so I did have a cervical cancer screening test or a smear test. Um, so what happens as an overview, it wasn't cervical cancer, just to clarify, thank goodness, um, there wasn't any HPV in my um, cervix either, which is brilliant. So what happens, um, my doctor was lovely, I did request a female doctor, which is one of the ways that you can help to increase your confidence before going to one, if you feel more comfortable with a female practitioner, even if you have a favourite female practitioner, you can request that individual if you feel more comfortable with that person. So what happens and um, they get you to lay on the bed they get you to take your bottom half off um, i think you're always wearing leggings of some sort or jeans perhaps take them off take your knickers off as well they give you a roll of paper tissue like um like tissue paper almost and that covers your bottom half you then really hard to describe without showing you it but to put your legs and you almost 
put them up in a position um so you put your feet together and then you put your legs your knees sort of downwards like this um and then at that point the practitioner so she gets some kgb jelly onto the spectrum spectrum sorry and then inserts it into the vagina um sounds awful but clamps it open so a couple of millimeters so that she can see your cervix get your little stick swipe it round and out the whole thing was over i want to say in about two minutes and for me personally i didn't find it too uncomfortable you know it wasn't a nice process but i wasn't in pain or uncomfortable and um, there were different ways in which you can increase your comfortable um things so for example taking the paracetamol prior you know if you if you're in a very local gp practice like mine where i do know some of the staff members requesting somebody that perhaps you don't know if you feel more comfortable with that or requesting your favorite practitioner again that's offered for you booking a double or a longer appointment if you feel that you're going to need a little bit more time so you're not feeling rushed again that's available for you you know taking a chaperone that is something that is offered to every single person in the uk um i know they made the, my my gp said do you want somebody present and i said no i'm okay thank you my boyfriend was sitting outside i felt comfortable more comfortable with that situation however if you want to go in with your friend your mom your relative your partner whoever you feel more comfortable with and you feel would, would help that process help that um event absolutely um some people feel um like booking it the first as the first appointment of the day so you're not waiting in a waiting room for too long again can help with that asking perhaps the practitioner to talk it through with you first um i know some people like to bring music with them i just chatted the back legs off my gp to be honest as i always do i'm very chatty and when i'm nervous i'm a little bit more chatty and she was lovely she was fine with that um, people can like I say listen to music listen to podcasts sing whatever you feel the most comfortable with and um, I would always say as well to wear some comfy clothing to wear maybe like jacket bottoms or leggings something you can easily slip on and off a dress would be brilliant as well if you could lift it up and um, obviously if you're not wearing tights if it's warmer than it is today um, but the whole aim behind it like I say um is to help prevent that cancer from developing um and there's so many ways in which you can make it a more enjoyable not enjoyable but more um a less unenjoyable experience um and i do feel that it's so 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 important that and that once you go for it once perhaps you'll be more comfortable and confident the next time and so forth and you know getting these tests can save lives and it's not just your life that would be affected but it would be your family your children your friends your colleagues everybody around you and um, so for two minutes of a little bit of uncomfortableness is definitely worth it than a lifelong effect of cervical cancer um so like i say i will include some links at the bottom of this video for you to look at but any questions please do let me know